Hey everyone, welcome to the 3D Prints and Build channel. In this video I will review Mingta Magician Pro 2 3D Printer. Before I start the review, make sure to hit the su subscribe button and ring the notification bell. I will show you different things I experienced and what I think about this 3D printer. First off, let's take a quick look what comes with the printer and how it's packed. The packing material is that annoying white plastic which leaves small pieces area. I have reviewed Mingta printers before and they had white small crap area, but this time printer is covered with plastic bag. It almost fixed the issue, some pieces are here and there, but it's not a big deal anymore. Inside the box are user manual, SD card, some tools, some extra parts and small amount of filament. This printer is mostly assembled and you need to do three steps. First, install the gantry with six bolts reinforcement parts with two bolts. Filament holder can be installed on both sides. Next step is to install extruder. If we take a closer look at the extruder, we can see the engine screw. On the top you can see filament sensor. There are two cooling fans for the heatsink and also two cooling fans to cool prints. Extruder is installed with two bolts and after that you need to install the connector. The last step is to connect all the wires. It didn't go without problems. When I tried to connect the gantry connector, it didn't want to go in. I noticed a broken piece and one pin was bent. I don't know if it came like that or I have damaged it by installing gantry. I took off the broken piece and bent the pin back. So this issue is fixed. Printer is now set up and let's see what features this printer has. First thing that which stands out is the build volume. It's 400 by 400 by 400 millimeters, which is the biggest 3D printer I have ever used. Yes, it's not the biggest one on the market, but still on the bigger side. To better understand the size, I put QLT Ender 3 V2 next to it. Page sheet is flexible PAI steel blade with textured surface. I also needed to adjust one bed roller, other rollers were good. The X and the Y belts were too loose, but it's not a problem because Pro 2 has belt tensioners. Pro 2 is quite tall printer and to make it more stable it has two aluminium extrusion supports, double C axing motors and double lead screws with bearings on the top. There are two options for connections, USB, SD card and USB-C. Extruder has LED light that indicates the temperature. When gold, it's blue and yellow red when it's warmed up. During the printing, it's yellow, which looks like something is burning. I think this color changing LED is not necessary, but LED will be fine. Pro 2 has auto leveling, which is advertised as one click auto leveling, but I needed to do much more clicks before I got it leveled. I used the user manual and did auto leveling. 36 points will be measured. The bed should now be level, but you need to adjust the offset also. It will be done during printing. It seems to be level, but when I try to print bigger things, I noticed it's not leveled everywhere. So I made a simple leveling test and tried out the leveling again. Still same results. I adjusted the C offset many times. I got the edges leveled ok, but in the middle nozzle was too far from the bed. So I tried to preheat bed longer and level, still same. I updated, I updated the firmware and leveling still had problems and also screen icons messed up. Contacted Mingta and got new firmware update files and it fixed the icons but leveling same. Auto leveling didn't work correctly but this printer has option to level all the points manually. After several times manual leveling and several test prints I got it leveled. 36 points take time to get it right. Pro 2 also has some printing feature when I filament run out and when power goes out. I tested both and they worked as they should. 
When you look to the cube, you almost can't see where filament ran out. But when power went out, you can see that cracked line and some filament pieces. When power goes out, printer need to heat up again, and it can cause filament pieces or some under extrusion when continuing printing. If we talk about the power consumption, it draws quite much power, because it has a big build plate to heat. It takes about 420 to 470 watts when preheating, and during the printing PLA, it's between 150 to 240 watts. One PLA 3 d bench took about 289 watt hours. I started measuring from the switch on and stopped when print finished. And the 3 V2 takes about 196 watt hours. On the Mingta website, we can find out that it's ultra silent when printing, so I measured how much noise it makes. I used the smartphone app, which isn't 100% accurate, but I can still compare it with others. It's between 48 to 53 decibels. I can't say it's ultra silent, but it's a little bit better than average. Interesting is that when it's just idling, it makes same level noise. I also measured heat to bed to see if it's heated evenly. The measurements aren't 100% accurate, but still we can see the differences. Heat to bed temp is set to 60 degrees. The measurements are quite similar. That's good. I tried different filaments and printing modes. Let's see what I have printed and how they came out. I used Cura profiles which came from the SD card. First print I printed was Angel from the SD card. This print came with supports which were quite easy to remove. This print also has raft. I think it's not necessary for this print. This model has good flat bottom which will stick nicely. Removing the raft was not easy and I left one layer of draft on the print. Overall quality is ok. Next print was Spaceship I printed with waste mode. It failed. It was almost max size Pro 2 can print. I printed smaller one also, but same results. Then I tried other filament and higher temps and I got better one, but still not without problems. I tried to print other model with waste mode and it came out very good, no problems. I don't know why Spaceship failed. Next one is this cool wall decoration. First attempt to print, it failed. It was before I got paid level correctly. This print is good paid addition test and Pro 2 handled it nicely. The top layer isn't the best looking, but changing some print settings should be fixed that. I had to try even bigger print. I found one box model from the online and changed it a little bit. This box is massive. Most impressive thing about this print is that handles printed without supports, so Pro 2 can bridge long distance without problems. Bottom and top layers are both great, can't complain anything. Pro 2 can print big things. It took 54 hours and 655 grams of PLA. If you think it's reasonable to print this box, maybe not. Printed long time, it can be shortened with bigger nozzle and bigger layer height, but filament cost can be much more than just buying it. I use cheap filament and comparing similar boxes at store where I live, it cost me about the same. This articulated snake pretty fine, no problems with adhesion, but there were some under extrusion. I printed 3D Benji with different filaments. PLA printed almost ok, little under extrusion on the side, but overall fine. String it isn't a problem, it can be changed with lowering temp and adding more retraction. I use Cura profiles from SD card. ABS was better than PLA1, no complaints. First PTG print came out bad, I raised the printing temperatures and lower cooling fan speed. After I did these changes, I got much better results. I don't know what filament they used to make your profiles, but my filaments needed changes. First attempt to print TPU was failed, because filament jammed between extruder gears. Cleared the filament and tried again. The front part had some issues, but overall fine. I printed tolerance test and it was fused together on the bottom, so I raised the C offset and tried again. Bottom layer much better, but now it's fused together from the top. Can't raise C offset more because rotation problems will happen. This pair is printed with 0.12mm layer height and it came out nice. Smooth looking and with this filament it's very shiny. 
it printed without support fine. I want to say it's perfect quality, but I can't. It also had some under extrusion. Like any 3D printer, the Pro 2 has its pros and cons. Let's break it down. Start with the negative things and things I think could be different. C axis have supports, but the holes inside the bottom inch parts are too big and are not making it stable. Extrude tension screw is bent. The one click auto leveling isn't working like it should and you need to manually level the bed to get good results. Next firmware update could fix it. If you print big prints, the bed covers the screen. The screen placement is compact, but I prefer better visibility. On the side would be better. The thin plastic from the top of the frame don't look good and no need for that either. The cable came little bit loose. I think if it came loose already, it can come loose more with the time. Card reader would be good to include it with the printer. Most printers have it included, not a big thing. Last thing is the printing speed. It's quite slow for newer 3D printer. There are many things I like about this printer. First thing, it's the, go it's the good presentation. After I got the leveled, I didn't have any problems. Big build volume is very nice. Printer interface is easy to use and you can adjust many settings. I also like that you can manually level different points, because if auto leveling fails some points, you can fix that. Overall, build quality is good. Setup is easy and it don't take much time. Different connection options is great. I was impressed that it can bridge long distance without no problems. To wrap things up, the Pro 2 is a solid choice for anyone looking to dive into the printing big models. It offers a great build volume and despite a few drawbacks, it's a good workhorse. If you are interested in checking it out, I have included the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.